What up world? Back again with your girl Restu. How you doing? No. It's been a while since I posted my last video and that was a very random travel vlog. If you haven't seen the video, you better watch them out and if you are new here, you better click that subscribe button and turn the notification on because I just make a new series for my YouTube channel and it's gonna be so great because we are going to talk about Balinese culture. Hashtag Bali Talk with Restu. For the first episode, we're going to talk about Balinese traditional clothes. So a lot of my non-Balinese friends ask me, why are there a lot of Balinese clothes? Which one is for the ceremony? Which one is for the wedding? Which one is for praying and etc. Now, let's discuss about it. Just like the social class in Bali, the traditional clothes also have its own class or its own level. The highest one is called as payasagung. Why is it called payasagung? So payas means clothes and agung means the greatest. So payasagung is the greatest class of Balinese traditional clothes. So payasagung is one of the most popular traditional clothes that is usually used in wedding ceremony, matata ceremony, or teeth filling ceremony, and etc. So payasagung is divided into two kinds. The first one is payasagung for the women, and also the payasagung for the men. So payasagung for the women is usually identified by the crown that is used by the woman on their head, and also they wear a sasanteng or the, or the clothes that wrap around their body from their bust until their hip and also they wear a common or the clothes just like a skirt that is used from their hip into their leg. Payasagul of women also contains of some kind of accessories just like a bracelet, a big bracelet on their arms, necklace, and also a big pendant on their ear. And for the men, they also wear a crown just like the woman but not as big as the woman's crown. And the shirt that they wear is usually long sleeve, while for the common or the clothes that is wrapped from their hip under their leg is usually longer than a woman. So they have to wrap it around their arm, so to make it uh, to make it easier for them to walk. Next, the second one is called payas jangkep. The word jangkep means complete, so payas jangkep is the complete Balinese traditional clothes. Most of you gonna ask me, if it is complete, why is it not going to be the greatest one? Why is it has to be the second greatest one? The Payas Janka is not a ceremonial traditional clothes. It is just a casual one. Payas Janka is usually used in pre-wedding photo shoot or pre-wedding video shoot. And also, Payas Janka is usually used in wedding reception. So it's more casual than the Payas Agung. And then, what is the difference between payas agung and payas jangkep? So payas agung is usually contains of white and yellow color, but payas jangkep you can use another color in payas jangkep. So it's gonna be more casual because in ceremony in Bali you have to use white and also yellow color. So it's not really religious really for people to use payas jangkep in some kind of ceremony. Next, the third one is payas madya. Madia means middle, so Payas Madia is the middle Balinese traditional clothes. This is one of the most popular Balinese traditional clothes because it can be used casually or for the ceremony thing. The Payas Madia contains of the kebaya or the top that I wear today and also it contains of common or the clothes that I wrap from my waist until my leg and also it contains of Babad or selendang, that is the clothes that I wrap around my waist. And for the man, Payas Madia is usually contains of a shirt. It can be long sleeve or it also can be a short sleeve. And also, they also wear uh, a common just like what I wear today, but it usually white. And also they wear a wastra, another, another clothes that is uh, wrapped around their waist until their knee. And they also wear a destar or the cap that they wear in their head. And the last one is payas alit. Payas alit is the most casual Balinese traditional clothes because it usually used when you have to help your neighbor in doing some ceremony thing. So you don't have to wear uh, the payas madia because you are not going to be in the ceremony. You're just helping them in making the offering, in making the facilities or the whatever thing that they need to be exist in their ceremony. So you don't have to wear payas madia, you can just wear payas alit. The pass alert is usually contains of common, 
the thing that wrap around your waist until your leg and also you can just use a t-shirt because it's not going to be a ceremony thing but you just have to wear a shirt and also a selendang or baban well, besides those four levels of Balinese traditional clothes, there's also the other two Balinese traditional clothes which is not contained in the level. So the first one is Payastari or the dancing Balinese traditional clothes. As you know, Bali has a lot of traditional dance just like Kecha, Legong, Pandet, and etc. So there are a lot of traditional clothes for every dance. Just like in Legong, Legong has a different clothes as in Pandet. Pedat also has a different clothes as in Kecha. So there is a lot of clothes that is worn for the traditional dance. And the second one is Pias Modifikasi or Modificated Balinese Traditional Clothes. So in Pias Modifikasi, you can modificate between the Pias Agong and also the Pias Madia. You can just make it as one kind of Balinese traditional clothes. It's usually used in also in wedding ceremony or also metata ceremony. The other kind of Pias Modifikasi is for traditional dance. You can also make the fusion between the payas tari and also the payas agung to make it as one. You can wear in the traditional Balinese dance. So that's all for the first episode of Bali Talk with Verse 2. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and also please give a comment for what kind of thing that you want me to talk about about Balinese culture in the second episode of Bali Talk with Verse 2. And don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel and See you again in my next video. Bye!